and welcome to this episode of What a Horse and uh, old Crip. Yes, sir. <laughs> de demanded to be on the show. Yep. I just wanted to tell everybody thanks for all the calling that they gave me. <laughs> Does they keep you up? <laughs> no, not really. Well, well he, he's still in, in some pain. I yeah. guarantee if I haul off him, get, if I goosed him, he, he'd probably have I'd be on that floor right there. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, do you want to or you want I, me to? I want to do it. You want to do yeah, it? Yes. Go ahead and do it. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. People in Tennessee are starting a movement. Ouch. Thank you. To clean up the litter on our roadways. Litter hurts our environment and endangers wildlife. And it affects our quality of life. Here, cut me. Thank you. Help keep our state litter free. Let's roll. Visit nobodytrashestennessee.com and be part of the solution to end littering. Saving the best for last. That's right. Nobody trashes Tennessee. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. All right, want to let everybody know I am glad Jerry's back and I did not make him come. I, I'm glad to be back. I wanted to come. <laughs> I kept telling him, if you don't need to come over here, you don't need to come, but he was bound and return, determined to come. Well, I guess the, the big thing that we've been talking about is, uh, number one, the, the lawsuits that we've got out there. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the celebration was just more of uh, the actions of the USDA that, uh, that was unnecessary, really. Yes, it was. A lot of it was. You, you know what really got me is, and, and this, this is the bad part, they did not come to one morning class, not one. No, they did not. They did not check, and they gave one flat shot violation, the whole celebration, just one, and, and I'm not going to name who it was because I think that one was targeted. Yeah. I truly believe that they targeted that specific person that was coming up there and who's, who's the trainer was and who was presenting the horse, leading it up. Yes. But some of the things they did was just so far out in left field and then afterwards, after celebration's over with, they show up at a woe show. 
Yeah. In Broadhead, Kentucky. And this is one to where people can get keeps money. And they're up there turning down horses that don't even have bands on them. And from what I heard, that a field scar, a scar up around the knee like they got you yeah. on. I think the so I, I, I think the USDA has literally lost all consciousness. Well, the thing of it to me, Jerry, is this: I think they went to them shows like that after the celebration because of all the stuff they done during the celebration. Mm -hmm. They want to have bag up. That that's why they went to that show and was doing stuff that was out of the ordinary or whatever. So they can say, well, hey, we went to the celebration, done this, and we went to this other. Whoa, show and then the same yeah. thing, and you know, and before you, they went to them shows and didn't get nothing, or didn't do nothing over there. I know. Normally they wouldn't do nothing, but they went to a Rocky Mountain show. Yeah. That Keith Dane was judging, and I'm talking about. Everybody knows who Keith Dane is. That I don't know why in the world they'd ever have him judge anything, but the video showed that. One horse was all over the place, Rocky Mountain horse, and they let it show. And Granny was one doing the check. And, and that's the only thing I don't understand is if you there to check horses, a horse is a horse regardless if it's a quarter horse, walking horse, Rocky Mountain horse, or whatever. Now, if you're going to do one thing for one horse, you should do it for every horse. So if, you, if one horse move, if a walking horse move, you, if the other horse move, you shouldn't do the same thing if you are there to protect the horses. That's what you call yourself supposed to do. Well, I will tell you this, and, and, and there was one trainer, we're not going to call names other than the BMOs that did it. But, and I've even done some research on this since, since it came up to see how common it is. One trainer presented a horse that had a letter from the veterinarian. Now this is a licensed veterinarian in the state of Tennessee that he carries the letter up there to show that a gravel had worked its way through the hoof and blew out at the coordinary band. Now that is, is something that, that, um, uh, is common in all breed. In all breed horses, you're exactly right. But yet she wrote him up and said, well, that doesn't happen that often, said, said that this right here is, is, is abuse, and writes him up, giving no regard at all to what a veterinarian has inspected the horse, checked the horse, provided care for the horse, knows what caused it, and yet She's just jumping the gun and saying, and, and that, that's why we don't think, that's why we don't have no respect for you. You go out on a limb, you call up a, a Phil Scar intentional. Yeah. You take something like this, which is even backed up with a licensed veterinarian letter, and you disregard it. So that, that's why we have no respect for you, because you have no respect for us. And, and you, you show just how, how far-fetched your agenda is by your own actions, not ours, but by yours. Uh, we're going to be showing different things. Uh, it, it just, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it gets you so aggravated about this whole situation, I tell you. It gets you toe up, and, and my biggest thing is like this, and I may be wrong for seeing this or whatever, is... It's like segregation. You are taking this horse and saying he's not good enough to be this way, and you going he got certain rules that other horses have. I mean, it should be an equal thing. All horses should be on the one playing field. Well, they they can't do that because if they did, they they'd find out right quick that ours is the most cared for horse in the equine industry, and that's bar none. You know, but, but these these people they they want us to respect them but they want to come in here and do things that we know are unethical. And, and really, they were supposed to give us the benefit of the doubt years ago 
and, and, and give us due process. They, they have failed to do that, and they were ordered by the court to do it. Yes. So, but they want us to obey the law, but they don't want to. And I don't care if Reimer's listening to this. I don't care if his mother's listening to it, his dead ear, anybody. What they're doing is wrong. It's obviously wrong. And I cannot wait until the courts look. The only thing I hope and pray for, and I really do, I want to see them bring the BMOs in, bring the guards in. I want to bring all those people in to court and let them testify under oath to what they've done if they believe it's right or if they believe it's wrong. And I just don't see all of them lying. And I know the only way that they're going to get by with it is to lie. And I'm going to tell you, the way some of the ones do things now, Jerry, I don't believe they have no conscience whatsoever. I, 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 think, I, just, don't, I just don't believe I, it. I, 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 I think some of them have a conscience, and, and I believe it probably bothers them. Those are the ones I don't think will lie under oath. Yeah. Now, Carrie, I wouldn't put nothing past her since she, she doesn't pay any attention to anything but what's on her agenda. Yes. Uh, the, there's two others there. I don't, I really think the soul has got, I, I think he's got more integrity than to lie under oath. I, I really yeah. do. And I'd have to think that Rebecca Nanny and Noella, now those two, I, I, and I may be wrong. They. Those people could be, because there's different ways of looking at this, and I've talked about this to a lot of people. Uh, they could be so afraid of losing their job that they'll say anything. Yes. But uh, there is something called the whistleblower's law. And ladies, I'm telling y'all, if you're watching, it might be time to get your whistle out and start blowing it and just telling them people exactly what's going on because once this hits the court and the news gets a hold of it and people start actually doing reporting on what's happening it ain't it ain't gonna be pretty no it's not and uh really and truly i, I think it's going to paint a completely different picture of the walking horse industry because we know what kind of horse we got it we got you and I was talk, sitting here talking about taking care of one and making sure that a foot doesn't get broke off yeah. and reshoeing him now and not stretching the time limit. They don't know what trainers go through. You are exactly right. To present just like the one with the blowout. Mm -hmm. That trainer didn't intentionally do that. He had a veterinarian working on that horse all the time, but yet she wants to come in and say, no, nah, say that that's abuse. And, and it's ridiculous. I mean, they, they, a girth rub, which is accidental, that's not on purpose. No. Uh, a field scar, that's not on purpose. Uh, a breast band rub, that's not, but they want to make an HPA violation out of everything. If they walk up there and a, and a horse is, is uh, snorts, who knows? I remember one that reached down and nuzzled Carrie's head, and she gets ballistic with the handler. You know, at this time of year, a lot of horses get heat fungus and yeah. all that stuff and lose all the hair on the side of the neck and, yeah. and everything else. You know, that's not something intentional that somebody done. That's just something that somebody that just happened that's in, in that horse nature to have. That's it. You know. Now, right here's a video we got, and I want everybody to look, look at first what she's doing with her fingers. She's raking the hairs apart, pulling them apart, trying to create or find any little blemish or anything down there that she can say was intentionally done to abuse this horse, which well, is just- When you have to go through that screen right there, you're going too far. Well, they know that. They know what they're doing. Now, right here is one that's really good. When this lady, she's palpating the back now, but watch what she does when she goes around to palpate the front of the foot. 
Look at what she does with her fingers in the rear of the horse. She's wrapping it. She's supposed to be palpating the front. She's not supposed to be gouging that pocket with that finger. Now she's got two in there and she just keeps getting more and more anything to make the horse move, which is not the way to palpate a horse. She knows it, we know it. Now here is the beginning of the one night, the time zone. Noella gets the first horse. Rebecca Nanny is going to get the second horse. And then Carrie is going to get the third horse. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to tell you, all three of these horses got turned down. But they're sitting there waiting, and they're going to tag every horse they can. Yeah. And what was really funny, at the beginning, Granny was turning down the majority of the horses. And then it got to where it was pretty even across the board. All of them were turning down the same, close to the same number of horses. Yeah, so, you're right. So that tells me right off the bat that they said, hey, we can't let her turn down all these horses. Y'all got to turn down some too. And that's what happened. And I want everybody to keep watching this video because it's, it's, it's going to get more and more interesting as, as it goes on because you're going to notice that the first one in there is going to still be there when the others are done. And here comes Granny. She sees one coming. Now I'm getting mine. So she's going to take him over there where those two officers are sitting. This, this is what gets me. This is what we put up with every year with them. At one time, they had so many people backed up in there that you couldn't hardly move, and I'm hoping by next week we have that video in here. Cause it, you had more horses that was in inspection and time out than you had in the warm-up area warming up. That's yeah. how many horses they had, yeah. tied, they had up in that area right there. Well, they, they're not supposed to interfere with the flow of the show. They do that intentionally. They come in and the first thing they want is for you to go over and move the inspection area to the far end of the building because we don't want it up here. We want it down there, which by law, they can do that. They can inspect them out in the field somewhere if they want to. But they always try to cause a problem, cause anything to intimidate, infuriate, yes. or or cause somebody to give a some kind of provocation that they want them to say to them, well, they got food. Nobody did. Everybody let them have their little heyday. If everybody watched this first horse right here, yeah. that's right here, that horse was moving his foot before that lady even put her hands on his foot. Yep. And then once she checking him, he's standing still. But now he was moving his foot you know, by itself before they even touch him. 141 days when I ran for those six horse entries. We well, what gets me? But now if you watch a sal you watch the salad bread, the video you have of the salad breads and all them, I mean, they were doing this wor way worse than sitting oh, back. They were jerking, yanking all over the place and they were saying, oh, these are all right. These are fine. Now here, here's what gets me. She's checked the horse. Now she's rubbing. Now, now she's gonna lift the tail. I mean, it just, with her flashlight, she's doing all of that. Now she's going to go back up there now. She inspected that horse for just under four minutes. Rebecca Nanny's already through with her inspection, and she didn't have that horse half the time that yes, Noella right. had hers. Mm -hmm. And Granny, she's still over palpating. Now, just so everybody knows where I'm headed with this, Noella is going to put her horse in timeout. 
and we're not going to show all of it because it's a little over 10 minutes in time out. Yeah. A little over 10 minutes standing right there, not budging, standing right there. And then after she stands there all that time and these other horses are turned down, she finally decides, yes, I'm going to turn that one down on a scar rule. So that means it, that it took horse you that is, long. <laughs> it took you that long to think you're going to turn him down the scar rule. <laughs> it took that I, long to form the scar. That's right. Yeah, because if it was a scar, she could have turned him down right then. Now some people say, well, she may have wanted to turn him down on something else, and maybe she did. Maybe she wanted to add to it. But the fact is, if he had had a scar, she would have gone ahead and turned him down because that's what they're after. They just want to turn the horse down. You see, Nanny, Rebecca Nanny has already turned hers down. They're getting videos already. That one's still in timeout. Now, for all you people that think we are bad, this is an example of what we go through at every show when the USDA shows up. They do everything they can to intimidate anything to, to cause us confusion, whatever. You well, know. I think that a lot of this too is everybody was Granny and uh, Amy, everybody was so hard on them. So I think they kind of like put the heads together and say, hey, everybody, y'all better get together and because it, you, everybody calling these two out. So everybody better start doing what, you know. Well, there's a, there's a reason for calling them out. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, because they ain't doing what they're supposed to do. <clears throat> well, they're not being honest. They're not being ethical. And it's pretty obvious. When you can overrule a veterinarian on what they have treated a horse and done for a horse, but yet you're, you're going to overrule everything that he has done yeah, and say, well, no, nah, he's wrong. I'm right. You abused this horse. I'm writing you up. I'm turning you down. All right. One other thing that we did, and uh, we're going to play a video that uh, Mark Farrah gave a speech about what's going on during the celebration. And uh, we wanted to share that with everybody that didn't have the opportunity to be there or watch it. So let's go to that video. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've had an entertaining show here in the Big Oval, but it hadn't always been the best conditions outside of the Big Oval. If you think it's felt a little different this year, then you're right. I've got great news. We've got four entries that are getting ready to show for the World Grand Championship tonight. Come in the gate, that'll make a total of 1,801 entries that have been through the gate and into this show ring this week. But I think we want to give you a little bit more of an explanation about what's going on than probably anything we've ever given you from Center Ring. I think everybody here knows that for years there have been radical activists that have been working against us, and unfortunately some of them have been able to gain positions within our own government, specifically the USDA. Last year, our industry began developing a plan to stand up for our horse and our people and stand up to the overreach of the federal government. We put that plan into motion this past March. There's always been a fear of retaliation, and for many years, that fear led us to exhaust every other remedy rather than take the bold stand that we did this year. Putting our fears aside, we filed two complaints against the USDA and federal court with multiple plaintiffs and have seen the House Oversight Committee take notice and start looking into some of those allegations. Folks, this is unprecedented. Knowing that something had to be done, the Tennessee walking horse industry has come together more than any time in our history. And we all knew things could easily get worse before they get better. And many owners and trainers have paid the price this week. But in the coming months, we need to make 100% sure that that has not been in vain. We're not asking for special treatment, we're asking for fair treatment. 
We're not asking for no inspections. We're asking for fair, objective inspections. And I can tell you that the overreach that we've experienced during this show season and this year's celebration are precisely what the lawsuits are focused on. The lack of due process, which truly is guaranteed and should be guaranteed to every American, along with their interpretation of the SCAR rule and ability to disqualify horses for things like inflammation on the back feet. But I'm here to tell you that the industry is united more than any time in our history, and we cannot let them win by us falling apart now. We've all been told that the only way to fight back is in our court system. We're doing that. And tonight, we will not show defeat, but we will remain strong, standing in solidarity for our horse and our industry. Ladies and gentlemen, there's not a lot we can do, but we want you to leave no doubt when this class is over how much we sympathize with those who have endured this injustice, how much we support the fight that lies ahead, and how much we love our horses. I want them to hear your cheers, not only out in the barn area, but all the way in Washington, D.C. Are you guys with us tonight? I think it pretty much told it like it was. Yeah, it did. I wanted people to see some of the stuff we went through as a reason to the video of the congressional meetings, all of this, all that's behind us. Now we stand united. I believe that when it's all over, we're going to be victorious. I yep, truly do. I, I think Frank Eichler has done a fantastic he job. He has done a good job. I think the industry as a whole, the trainers, everybody has stood up and done what needed to be done. And I'm ready to see the walking horse industry move forward. I'm going to do it this time. That'll work. We're going to take a short pause for our sponsors, and we'll be right back with some good horse video. Giles Dunn is a leader in both cultured and lab-grown diamonds. Located at 234 North Jackson Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee, Giles Dunn is well known for his beautifully designed jewelry. From that special diamond for your special wedding day to the one that says I love you more, Giles Dunn is the place to shop if you want to say it with diamonds. Open five days a week and always ready to assist you in that one in a lifetime purchase. To set an appointment for cultured or lab grown diamond viewing, call 931 563 7800. Hey Tennessee, Ross Chastain here, the guy who likes to smash watermelons on the front stretch at Nashville Super Speedway. But you know what I never smash? Safety rules. Racing's all about control, and the same goes for life on the road. So use your melon and don't mix drinking and driving. It's like trying to race with a busted engine. Be a pit crew hero. And if you've had a few, pass the keys to a sober friend because we're all racing toward a safer Tennessee and we want you there at the finish line. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. Welcome back. Uh, Jerry, you didn't know we was going to do this, but we have, we have started, CJ, Clarence Henry, started a GoFundMe page for Jerry Williams. Need to remind everybody, it's still out there. That's the culprit. That's yeah. the horse. We, we're going to... Well, I I think the whole biggest thing that coach, you know, it's a horse and he's still young yep. and everything. And so, you know, you can't really, you don't never know what goes through their mind at one point or the other. Well, he went through yours, buddy. Yeah, he did. But I mean, it just, it, that's just the whole thing of when you fool with a horse, you don't never know <laughs> what's going to happen. Well, I, 
I'm glad you're back. I, I tell you, Trent is very toe up about that. They got it on that horse. I mean, he's. And I tell you, I always tell him, you know, everything's okay. Everything's cool. Everything yeah. be cool. I got something else I want to show people. For years, there was a wise tale about triple threat, and everybody knows Doug Woolliver won the World Grand Championship on triple threat. However, Buddy Black actually rode triple threat and train triple threat, but when they was wanting to promote triple threat, they didn't have a pitcher. Yeah. So right here is the Doug Wolliver, but right there is Buddy Black. <laughs> and if you look, those are the same horses. Yeah. Same pitcher. Les Nelson took the pitcher. One of them's colored, one of them black and white. And this is just the way they, they took Doug's head yeah. and put it on triple threat with Buddy Black up. You know that horse, my dad <coughs> helped start that horse down in Louisiana. Right? Gaynell Tinsley was the one who brought that horse from Louisiana up here and they bought He showed him up here and that's when they bought him. Yeah, they didn't start riding this horse until he was five years yeah. old when uh -huh. they really started training him. Digby Palmer was the one that yeah. had him as a baby. Yeah. But he, he kept going, going, going. Oh, yeah. And then he uh, he went for it. He was reserved one year, and then he was reserved again, and then he won it. Yes. So he. But I know a lot about that, that triple threat stuff. Well, everybody doubted that, but Pam Hawker Smith gave me that colored print, and I started doing the research, and I found the white, black and white picture, and it is the same, same picture, yeah. same horse. And that was the first time they used some kind of cut and paste Photoshop uh -huh. or something. Yeah. It was it was poor our time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to day one or day five. We're gonna do day five. Ultra right here is Ultra Pink Pistol and Jennifer Bingham for Salt Lick Farms in Bingham. Here's your two-year-old Mary Guild and Section B winner. Yep. That's a nice horse, Jennifer. She does a real good job on them horses riding. Pretty much when you see Jennifer riding a horse, she riding a good one. If she ain't gonna ride one that ain't good. Yeah. Well, people know when she comes in the ring, she's on a good one. Or oh, she yeah. wouldn't be in there. That's that's another thing. Right here is Watch for Honor and Jordan Golden for Charles Glegren, Honor Amateur Novice Show Pleasure winner. That's a real nice horse. Yeah, it is. I thought mighty good horse. Watch for Honor. You know, when you're in this industry, and it's like the pain I'm in, but when you watch these videos, you forget about the, you forget about the pain. You just kind of watch that video. That's kind of that's kind of hipping thing. Makes it worthwhile, doesn't it? Yes. Right here is Miss Stone Cash and Linda Botch, elite owner, amateur ladies, married, guild, and winner. Congratulations on a terrific job on this mare. You know she could have showed in the novice and all them, but she chose that one. Yep. That's Miss Stone Cash. Getting it done. Nice man right there. Good one. I am big enough. Now right here it is. I am big enough and Frank Clark. I'll tell you what. That's a good little pony right there. It's been like good a for a long machine. time. Like a sewing machine. You and I both talked about it. He he does now have a bad outing. He goes out and gets it done the every thing time. About it, the thing about it to me, Jerry, all these other horses can do a whole lot and do big things, but every time you look at that horse, he's doing the same gear. He, he, he is a walking horse. He come in doing that and he leave out doing the same thing, and that's what you talk about. That's what, that's what a walking horse is. Consistency. Here's your young trainers, 35 and under, Joe Paul and Tanner Burks for Shane Porterfield. Young trainers 35 and under on Bears and Gilded Blue Ribbon winner. It's Joe 
That's another nice horse right there. He's been nice for a long time. I think he was gilded for a reason. Yeah. And I don't think it was for Shane, to <laughs> tell you the truth. Yeah. I think Shane's got ideas. He might have ideas, and they'd be good. Hey. Day six. I like this horse right here. Yeah. And I am tickled to death for Skyler Nipper. I truly am. Me too. She, uh, she deserves every bit of this. That horse went on with world grand champion. Skyler sets a good sleep she now. Does. She really does. She had a good teacher. Yes, right she there. did. Yeah. Joel was one of the best. And here's Crypto and Caitlin Rippy for Andy Rippy, owner amateur four-year-old country pleasure winner. That's a nice one. That is. We got some great flat shot horses. Oh, we got some real good horse, flat shot horses out there. I think that's what Juneteenth, that little filly that we got. Yeah. Like a great flat shot. Right here, Gigi is Majestic and Elsie Bradford. <coughs> For William Bradford. I tell you what, this one right here is in the winter circle a lot of times. Oh, yeah. A lot. And she shows English and Western. And that's really what it's all about when you've got a horse, especially a flat shot. English, Western. You got it all. And here's I'm Charlie Black, CFF, Daya Smith Har. For owner Smith and Har. I'm Charlie Black, CFF. This one right here wasn't nothing wrong. No, it wasn't. Daya, she's a good rider. Oh, yeah. And this is a good horse right here. Hey, Bob, is, he's a good friend, yeah, but he's a good friend to the industry, and that is one bad horse right there. I mean, he is good. That's the only time you can say bad and mean good. That's right. We can talk about a horse, because he is, I can't say the word on here. That's right. Bad is the first one, and the other one starts with a A. <laughs> Bad <laughs> you. You got it. <laughs> Mark one and Molly Walters. I've always liked this one now. This horse is fun that, to talk that is about. A, yep. Well, he, he does everything right. I mean everything. So easy doing it. I know he does. Just, uh, Gets it done. Mark one and Molly Walters. Day seven. Here's Jimmer's Country Girl. I tell you what, I love this one. Now. Yeah. We've, we've got some great mares. Oh, we got some real good mean, mares. Some outstanding mares. And this one right here is, is one of them. I'd say right now we've, we've got six or seven of the best mares we've ever had oh, at yeah. one time. Oh, yeah. You do. 
we've got some great ones. In all different divisions. Yeah. Here's Talkin' Tennessee. Trail Pleasure two-year-old winner. I like that name. Yeah. Talkin' Tennessee. It's that four big, four big now gate talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Getting it done, buddy. Getting it done. Real nice. And you know, the biggest thing with that horse, that first time he was a show was at the International. Mm -hmm. We're in the show ring. And then come straight to the celebration. Yep. Right here's a claim and Winky Groover for Carol Rutner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we salute our world champion. Carol was excited about this now. Yeah. It's a claim. Winky Groover makes the winning run for Carolyn Rutner of Northport, Alabama. Good a horse. Claim. Matter of fact, I was sitting in, was sitting in the box next to yep. her when he showed sure on the horse. Yep. Nice horse. Yeah, he gets, gets it done. And here, no doubt I am, and Bob Adcock, amateur three-year-old stallion, Section A, reserve winner. Get her done, Bob. Bob got a lot of good horses. Yes, he does. And here's Warbird. I've always liked this one now. I think this horse has won his class for the last Warbird. two or three two yeah. years. I, I believe it has. Three years, yeah. You can understand why. Yeah, be a nice horse. But this horse has been a good horse ever since he was young. I remember Derek Monahan had him. The story then. Well, I tell you, the owner, Ginger, I've always yes. admired Ginger. She's a nice lady. Now. She is one fine lady. She's been there. Yes. First time I saw her, she, I asked her, I said, how'd you do? She said, well, I didn't win, but I had a good ride. Yeah. That's all that mattered to her. She just loved the ride. Day eight. The Paddock Master. And here's the Paddock Kenny Master Smith. and Kenny Smith. And what more would you want? Kenny is a super good guy, buddy. He's a good one. He is a good guy. And here's cheating on Charlie and Tim Smith for Rippy and Smith. There's a future in that one right there, too. Oh, yeah. Knowing Charlie, I like that name. Mr. Heisman. Right here's Mr. Heisman and Bruce McDonald. His final appearance in the show ring. That ought to be missed because he, he's just a He's a piece of work. Oh, he is. A nice horse. I remember the night he was in the preliminary all by himself. He put on the show. Yeah. Here's Mr. True Blue and R.M. Kelly for the Jacobs family. Owner Canner winner. To our championship weekend. The final run here on Wednesday night belongs to our open tanner winner. It's a nice horse right here. He is a nice horse. R.M. Dillon makes the winning ride for the Jacobs family. Real nice. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. We'll be right back after these messages. That's it. The Tennessee walking horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee walking horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee walking horse is the perfect family horse by young and old, whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee walking horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. More of What a Horse coming up. We're going to jump right into the good night. Yes. Right here he is, Say Cash and Susan Irwin for Dan and Susan Irwin, owner amateur novice, world grand champion. This lady put on a show. <laughs> No doubt. I mean she put on a show. That's a nice horse. Hey, super good horse. That spotlight ride will be remembered for years. Yeah. Yeah. Say cash. I like that name. Oh yeah, I do too. Now she put on a hell of a show. I mean, she, I mean, she that was her the show. The entire show. Yeah. She went for it. She didn't hold nothing back. She let them know. Nice she, horse. She was out there to tote the roses. And here's I am big enough in Frank Clark or Beasley and Clark. Our sewing machine right there. That's right. Beth and the girls were tickled to death with this. That's a walking little son of a gun right there. Hey, he gets it done. World Grand Champion. And here's Mayor Bill, Reserve World Grand Champion. And it, it wasn't nothing wrong with that. No. His horse has done it all. Steak yes. horse, I mean, he's done it. And now he's a Reserve World Grand Champion in the Park Performance Division in the Amateur Division. Mm-hmm. Mayor Bill. Kim Lewis is a fine lady. Yes, too, she is. She really is. Her and George, they, they great family. And here's Born a Maverick. This is her man right here. Yeah. I know that this just fit Bob Adcock to a T. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of him, happy for him, and everything else. But I've I've liked that horse ever since the first time I Me saw too. it. Riding down the south turn and down victory lane tonight as our owner amateur five-year-old world. Nice, champion. nice horse. Here's yes, there he is. Maverick. Bob Adcock is the owner and rider from Lennon, Pennsylvania. Born a Maverick and Bob Adcock, our world grand champions tonight in their division. Right here he is, Space Cowboy. 
Jonathan Baskin for Skyler Nipper. The light shot world grand champion. It may be his first, but I bet it ain't gonna be his last. That's right. He's a good jockey. Right here, spotlight on Jose. Horse right there. You know, <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking he was in there myself. A good horse. I know Bob's tickled with him. Oh, yeah. Now that horse, we're, we'll hear more and more about him. Oh yeah, There's no doubt about that. He just got everything it takes. V10. Right here, I be smoking Joe and Tucker Johnson. I just happen to have his hat right here in front of me. I be smoking Joe. That tickles Susie. Oh yeah. You know, I saw that horse. They had a preview out there at their barn, riding a bunch up, and I seen that going up through there. Yeah. And I, that's when I said, that right there that got it all. Nice horse. Hey, he gets it done. He's multi-time champion and won a ton of blue ribbons. And he's won them with both them boys. Oh, yeah. Tanner Tucker and their daddy, daddy. and mm -hmm. their grandfather. Yep. Here's Jalapeno, Joe Perry Lester, for Kimberly and Perry Walden. Joe Lester's riding Jalapeno to a Friday night spotlight ride as our Trail Pleasure three and under world grand champion. Same video of Perry feeding him water. <laughs> Out of his hand, he'd give us the old s'more, the old s'more. That's people that baby their horses oh, yeah. because they love them. Well, he walk a hole in the ground, can he? Oh, he can. Nice horse. Now, people stay in their seat and watch that. As, as time has passed, used to people flat shot class, they'd get up and go to the bathroom, bathroom or something. Yeah. Now no, they, they hit them seats. And here's I'm Charlie Black and Dahlia Smith Hart, owner amateur world grand champion pony division. You know, out of all these years, that's her first world grand champion. Huh. She's won a ton. Yeah. And I mean, um, well deserved. And right here, former line and Carol Baxter was reserve world grand champion pony. And that. That right there was a good one. That was a good one. A real nice horse. Carol, Carol does a good job of riding. Yes, yeah, she does a good job. Yeah, she does. Does great. Patrick Here's Patrick Mahomes. Paul Simmons, reserve world grand champion. I know he's proud. Oh, yeah. That's a bad cat right there. That is there, a good buddy. horse. I, I'm glad to see stuff that I started <laughs> in a <laughs> ring that can do stuff like that. Yeah. Hey, they don't get no better. Paul does a good job. Yeah. We, we got some good jobs. And right here he is. He's the medalist in Eli Cunningham for Wilson and Cunningham. He, what was he told us? He said, I'm, I want to get that blue. I want yeah. the world grand championship. 
I interviewed him over at uh, uh, Spencer Benedict's coat preview over there where they were bringing the lead lines out. I'm so and, proud, Mr. Wilson. Oh, I am too. I'm, I'm tickled for James, but I'm <laughs> happy for that young man. Yes, right sir. There. That's what he wanted, and he said, that's yeah. what I want. And he got it. Good and that's deal. a classic horse. Yep. So it don't get no better than that. Day of living. It's the end of the line, bud. Here's Uptight Jose, your reserve world grand champion, Baron Gilden, and Bruce McDonald. I, I was happy as all get out for Bruce McDonald. He, he had a good celebration. Just great things. I mean, he's just super. I love that horse, too. Now, people in Atlanta say she, she like that Uptight Jose. <laughs> And right here, Gigi's Majestic, Nelsie Bradford. Bradford, Reserve World Grand Champion, country, Amateur Country Pleasure. That's what I was talking about. This horse shows country, English, and it's always in the top. Oh, yeah. Good job, Elsie. Right here he is, Cavender and Tim Smith for Bruce and Robin McDonald. I followed this horse through his entire oh, yeah. career. Don't you know Tim's tickle? Oh, he's tickle now. Bruce and Robin McDonald in Shelbyville on the entry. It's Cavender and Tim Smith trying under the spotlight tonight for the third year in a row. A nice horse. Hey. So proud of Mr. Bruce and them. Well, I am. I'm telling and Robin. That far. They've been in the business for so long, they need a world grand champion. Well, that right like there was well deserved. Yeah. Now, that was my choice to, the whole time oh, yeah. to win it. That was one I thought could really get it done, mm -hmm. and, and he did. Well, Jerry, I am glad to see you out and about. But I, I'm glad to be out and about. And I tell you, this this is being on this show helps me keep going. Mm -hmm. well, I like it. You, I done told your wife that walking up and down the hallway, looking in the stalls, yeah. that's going to help you more than anything because yeah. you, you get your strength back. But crack ribs is nothing to fool with. No, it's not. I tell you, I promise you. It's, uh, <laughs> you don't want no more of it, right? If anybody don't know, I'm going to tell you, I'm a, I'm a prime witness of it. It's, it's you don't rough. want it. You don't, you want, don't it. want none of this. If you move your toes, it hurts. <laughs> well, we will see everybody again next week when Jerry Williams will once again. Yes, I'm, sir. We'll be here, I would imagine. Yes, sir. Y'all have a great weekend. Yeah, I'll be careful and safe. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. I got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, uh, please start talking.